this is the first pocket we're learning. There are several different variations of the double welted pocket that you'll learn through throughout my series, though they're only very slightly different based on what's necessary for jackets or inside pockets. This will be a thorough video, I hope, to provide a foundation for the other less thorough guides, and I hope it won't immediately scare off everybody. You need to cut two 19 by 30 centimeter pieces for the pocket bag, one 19 by 10 centimeter pieces for the bearer, and two 19 by 5 centimeter pieces for the jets and or welts, which I've cut perpendicular to the bearer because that's how it's done for grain and pattern related reasons. Not so important while we're practicing technique, but keep it in mind. For your trouser piece, at the moment, it needs to be 21 centimeters wide minimum, and I'd say at least 15 centimeters tall. Mark the center point of your trouser piece, and mark the point one centimeter either sides of it. Then measure perpendicular down eight centimeters to the center point. Mark the lines going from this eight centimeter central point to the two points that you marked on either side of the midpoint. To sew the dart, fold the fabric over the center line and baste it in place. Not on the dart line though. You might like to iron it too. Start at the bottom of the dart, pull some extra thread through, and use the wheel on the sewing machine to catch the very point of the dart. Machine up to the top following the line, and back tack at the top. Use the extra thread you've pulled through at the start and tie three knots to secure it, and cut off some of the excess thread. Iron it down so that it's pointing towards the side seam of your trouser. We don't have one of those, so just iron it down to either side. Every time you've finished machining a stitch, I want you to get into the habit of snipping the loose threads immediately instead of leaving them, and that is the only time that I'll say it. Having done as such, at the bottom of the dart mark a 15cm line perpendicular to and centred on the dart. At each end of the pocket opening, use a small piece of fusing which will secure the fabric and stop the little cuts we're making from fraying. To fuse the fusing, cut the smallest amount that you need and lay it on the point that you're using it. Lay a piece of cloth over it and press your iron on it for about 10 seconds without any steam or water. Just heat and pressure. Take away the cloth and it should be stuck there well and good. I've got a few options we can use. Well. I have two options, but if you want to use fusing, I suppose you can. I have what's called Holland Linen, or Linen for short, or you can use Silesia for lighter materials. Silesia is much softer, while Linen is more like cartilage. They're not essential should you not have them, but they're what's used to stiffen the pocket opening. I am using my Linen. Use a 19 by 5 centimeter piece and baste it on the inside where the dart is showing. Center it and baste it on the line you chalked out. With the first pocket bag, it must be centered on and run parallel to the dart. Baste it onto the trouser near the top and near the bottom. Now we're going to baste on the jets. Should you wish, you can put some Silesia linen fusing over half of the jet. The half close to the pocket hole, by the way, and you'll end up with stiffer welts and a stiffer pocket. It doesn't have to be done, but it can be done should you wish.
As you based on the first one, make sure you copy off the chalk line marking the edges of the pocket onto the jets so that you can still tell when it comes time to machine them. It's important that you are precisely starting and finishing where your pocket hole starts and ends, or is going to end. Or, at the very least, such that they start and end on the same vertical plane. Both lines of stitching need to be half a centimetre from the initial pocket hole that we drew, making the two lines one centimetre apart. You can remove all your basting now so far, not forgetting the linen basting like I did. Now cut open your pocket hole. Start in the centre and make a small cut such that you can get your scissors into the hole in order to cut a straight line. Stop at least a centimetre away from the edge of your hole because we're cutting a mitre, basically a triangle. Move the jets out of the way, do not cut the jets, cut very precisely to the edge of the machine stitch. This allows the welt to be folded and lay straight. Before we move on, mark a seam 1cm from the bottom of the lower jet. We're going to iron this up. Start with either one of the jets, turn it out through the pocket hole and spread the seam open and iron that. Fold out your second jet and do the same. It's easy to undo the ironing you just did on the first seam when you do the second seam. So you could lay the second seam on the edge of the board with the first angling off the edge, or just be quite careful. One at a time, begin by rolling and or folding the loose end of the jet over the seam that you iron flat and baste it in place. Ideally baste in the seam, that way the fabric will remain as unperforated as possible. Folded over the seam allowances, the welts should both be one half of a whole centimetre each. Done right, the basted welts will touch but won't overlap. You don't want any gaps though either. Proceed to baste the welts together. You want to do this so that when you sew the mitres down, your pockets won't be squiff, and it generally keeps them together while you're doing the rest of the pocket anyway.
With everything sealed in place, start with folding the trouser away such that you can machine the welt onto the seam allowance. Fold away the trouser fabric, the linen, silicia, and sew through the seam allowance that was ironed upwards, or downwards depending on which one. There's no set seam allowance here or whatever, just, so just as close to the first machining stitch as you want. Do the same on the other welt, and we'll move on to the mitres. Fold the triangles out and make sure that you're pulling them out taut, and folding the trouser fabric and linen and pocket bag out of the way and taut as well. Do make sure that the welts aren't overlapping, but are touching. Sew them together at the absolute base of the triangle, practically on the same line as the trouser is folded back, and go over it at least twice. You want to completely skip this step for your first one or two pockets, but regardless, you want to remove the basting. Closure-wise, you could leave it blank and it'd be a perfectly functioning pocket, or you could make a tab and sew a button onto the exterior of the pocket, or sew a buttonhole through the exterior and sew a button to the other pocket bag in bearer, earning its name, or you could make a flap. There are no set measurements that I'm using ex except for the width of the pocket hole, so I made it 15 centimeters wide, decided I wanted 4cm exposed, and then added another 4cm above that so that it will be completely and securely held when it's sewn up. Shape the flap to however you want it, make sure to give it seam allowances all the way around. Since I would do a buttonhole for this, except I lost my gimp thread, and I'm going to get rid of this sample once I finish the video, I also cut some silicia to the finished size of the flap to go inside of it. I basted the silicia to one of the pieces of the flap. I sewed the two pieces of the flap together without sewing through the silicia, trimmed away the corners so that it could be folded inside out cleanly, plus trimmed away half of one of the seam allowances so that the edge will sit more neatly. I chose to prick stitch the edge to seal the silicia in place for decoration and to keep the seam flat. Hence, I started by securing the seam with basting thread and then prick stitch around the edge. I'm a tailor, I'm all about the details. Sometimes, when it suits me. Remove the basting from the flap and the pocket opening. Whatever you're using as your closure, all you need to do is seal it up there in the position that you want it, stay it with needles or by basting, fold the trouser out of the way, and stitch about the same place as you did to keep the welt in place. But I'm going to secure it later when I seal the top of the pocket. On the other pocket bag, you ought to chalk a line 2.5cm from one of the short edges so that you have a reference point to sew on the bearer. And speaking of the bearer, mark 1cm from one of its long edges and iron that up. Position the unironed edge against the chalk line of the pocket. Base them together near the ironed hem so that you can fell them together.
Then you'll fill the lower jet that you already ironed onto the other pocket bag. Be sure to move the trouser out of the way, or at the very least, don't sew through it. Ordinarily, you'd have an entire back trouser to fold out of the way in order to get the pocket bags together. So, you ought to base the pocket bags together in order to keep them in place. But pinning them will suffice for now. Lay the other pocket piece on the first, bare side up, because it's going to be folded inside out. Machine them together with a half centimeter seam allowance. When machining the pocket, there are a couple of options you can use. You can stitch a perfect right angle in the corner and fold the seams over themselves to fold it out, or you can make it curved so that you're not losing any lint in the corner, and there's another that you can use which I'll go through in the single welted pocket. I've done the foldy one. Snip away the edges to less than half a centimetre so that there aren't any seams when you French it closed. Having stitched the corners at a right angle, fold the seam allowances on the corner over the stitch line. Hold them in place as you fold the corner out. When you fold the rest inside out, Make sure that the stitches you did are right at the edge and practically showing, and that they're not folded slightly to one side or the other. You could baste the edge once you have it where you want it. One thing you can do to get it where you want it is to roll and push the seam to the edge, making sure that it's centered and basting as you go. Or you could use a needle and pull the threads, though it's important that you're pulling the threads and not the fabric. If you pull out a piece of the weave, you've got problems. Maybe not with trouser pocket fabric, but if you're doing it on the lapel of a jacket... Mm. Sew your pocket seam closed with half a centimetre seam allowance. Then remove the basting if applicable. Now we're going to close the top of the pocket. It's no different if you're using a flap or a tab or whatever. You're just pulling the trouser out of the way and sewing in about the same place as the other two times you machined the top of the seam allowances in the welt. We're basically just reinforcing the mitres and the edge of the pocket. According to professionals, the back pocket is under the most stress, so I'll take their word for it even though I don't use my back pockets for anything. Doesn't mean you can skip this step though, it's still the weakest point of the pocket. The most difficult thing about this, I've found, is stitching good symmetrical Ds. But a general rule that I seem to have found helpful is you want about 8 pricks. Usually, the Ds would be properly pricked, but I'm doing it with my arms outstretched so that you can see it without my fat head in the way. But you want each stitch to be as small as possible. Then, stitch across the welt inside of the seam. It's a stitch for reinforcement, so no need to slack off on the reinforcing. If you're just prick stitching them on either side, there are other things that can be done, such as using a bar tack machine, but we're tailors. I'm sure we'll get to other possibly more interesting things in time, but for now, detack it. This could be done before you sew the second piece of fabric on, and the D on the inside, which is often a messy affair, will be hidden. Try both. Try one, at least. Plus, check the inside of the pocket that all the seam allowances are properly trapped between the two lines of stitching. 